Hi, it's Debbie from Creatively Yours and welcome to my 49th floss tube video. Um, I had a lot of fun making the last one with Alice and thank you all for your comments and questions and likes and yeah, it was a lot of fun and I'm sure Alice will be back for uh, another guest video. So yeah, hi Alice. <laughs> Um, I would like to start, this is a, I hope it, it's not going to be a very long video because I have a lot to tell you, but maybe we'll see. Uh, I would like to start with some questions to answer them, uh, from the last video. Um, the first question, uh, somebody asked was what program were you, or what app were you talking about in the last video? Um, I was talking about Pattern Keeper, uh, which is uh, firstly developed for full coverage uh, cross stitching. And um, yeah, I can tell you a lot about it, uh, but you have to look at it yourself. Um, it's what everybody is saying about it, it's true. It's a time saver, not in stitchy wise uh, you won't be stitching faster but you don't have to look up symbols uh, you don't have to look up numbers with symbols they are all there and it adds up uh, how many stitches you did so it's it's just a lot of fun and it makes you work faster so yeah uh, there are a lot of videos on uh, youtube about pattern keeper so if you would like to know more i would like to to uh, tell you to look at, uh, for instance, a needle bug. Uh, her floss tube channel. She did a full. Yeah, I I should say it's a tutorial about pattern keepers. So um, yeah, that was what we were talking about. And Alice just bought the app. Um, the next question I had was I was talking about an order with. Casa Cinina, which is an Italian-based webshop, and uh, they sell just about everything cross-stitchy related. So uh, the question I had was, um, how is the shipping and within the, within Europe, uh, how was the shipping and is it do doable with the waiting time? And yeah, I can only say yes. Um, the the times I ordered from them, they ship really fast, uh, they work with you, um, they keep you updated. Uh, if something is wrong with your order or something is out of stock, uh, unfortunately. So yeah, I should uh, say try it out and the shipping costs are not that high. So uh, yeah, it's a wonderful web shop and I will link it below uh, so you can try for yourself. And the last question I had was the stitch in time bag Alice was showing in the video. Um, where did she buy it? Uh, because it's hard to find on the internet. And she found out uh, through a comment. Uh, one of you were commenting on where she bought it. And it was at Society6, which is a website. And they sell a lot of things amongst them are bags so those were the questions and I hope you found the answers so next part of my video is my giveaway I did a giveaway in my last video it was a pasta stash um, it was a pattern I got from Alice she already stitched it and she only did some markings on um, on the pattern itself uh, in the key to list the numbers sh she chose. So it was Coffee Quaker by Heartstring St. Louis. And thank you so much for all your comments with your goals for this year. I had a lot of fun to read them all. And um, yeah, my goal um, again is to get healthy this, this year and to stitch a lot and to have fun with stitching and in life so um, I did yesterday evening I did a, a random comment picker uh, I didn't uh, film it because I 
didn't have much storage space so I just just picked the name from them uh, I had 53 um, unique commenters and the one who won the coffee Quaker is Frisian Stitcher yay congratulations I know you from Instagram I unfortunately have to say I don't know your first name but I know you're from the Netherlands and that's yeah just fortunate uh, congratulations I will leave a comment on your comment and uh, I hope you would send me your mailing address so I can send the pattern out to you and I hope you enjoy it I'm going to stitch it this year and uh, yeah hope to have a lot of fun with it because I already own the pattern so congratulations again Frisian Stitcher the next part of my video is um, my whips and FOs because I have two FOs um, as you all know I, I joined WhipGo 2020 uh, at the beginning of this year or late last year um, they chose you had to make a WhipGo board for the ones who doesn't know what WhipGo is you make a WhipGo board with 24 um, slots for projects and it doesn't matter if you list only five projects multiple times or 24 projects whatever you want and you make goals for yourself for this year and um, at the end of each month uh, Jessie Marie um, lists or draws two numbers from that board and you will have to focus that month on or the following month on those pieces and hope to reach your goal so the first numbers she chose were number six and twelve and my number six was playing with jacks by um, the cricket collection which was a stitch along with or between Erin to Martini Stitcher and Leslie Hurley Fat Cat Flossing and I joined them on the 28th of last year and I'm happy to say my goal was a finish <laughs> so I stitched and stitched and stitched and I finished it so I finished it on what date the 12th of January and I will take it up close I love it I love how it turned out I chose to do the forest pumpkin in the middle instead of the smiley pumpkin and yeah I love these colors and I am on the lookout for a frame for this one and I'm really happy I finished this one and yeah it was a lot of fun to stitch I used 28 count hand dyed by me um, gray uh, fabric dye and later in this video I'm going to show you how I dye my fabrics using jars um, so be on the lookout for that uh, this um, is just 28 count jobelin and uh, I love how it turned out this gray and I used the called for DMC's and some Victorian mottos just a mishmash of uh, floss I had so I'm really happy with it and I love loved finishing my first goal the second um, project I'm going to show you in my whip uh, part of the video um, I didn't met my goal because I set a goal for the whole year I want to um, finish finish the entire part and I'm not nearly close so I'm not going to mark off my goal for this month but I'm getting there and we'll see the next FO I have um, as you all know the devastating fires in Australia uh, yeah I have no words all the wildlife and people who are losing their homes I I'm just shocked every time I see the news and um, a lot of designers um, designed pieces cross stitch pieces for uh, this cause uh, which uh, when you buy it a uh, part of it or the entire um, uh, price is going to uh, wildlife preserve or the fire brigade brigade brigades hard word 
in Australia and I yeah I'm going to uh, I'm not going to show you every design there is because a lot of floss tubers already showed so but I'm going to buy the hands across the sea one the sampler because I love it and I love to uh, do my part um, but the other one was from Sassy Jack's Stitchery, which was a freebie she designed, um, Sassafras Samplers, I believe, and it's called Aussie Friends, and uh, yeah, it's just a freebie on the internet, uh, on the website of sassyjacksstitchery.com, I believe, and um, I chose my own colors, uh, DMCs I had, and um, yeah, Finished it. Started it on the 12th of January and finished it on the 17th. And this is what I did. I love it. I'm going to make it into a pin pillow. And yeah. Love to do my part. I chose to do the, the insides of the flowers uh, very light pink and not yellow as the pattern called for. But yeah really liked how this turned out so yeah it's just a 28 count pearl gray uh, jobelin and yeah this is just doable so yeah two fo's in one month really like it then on to the whip part of my video the first whip um I was working on and I need to reorganize some things um, the second number on my whip go board was <clears throat> December in the Netherlands and I'm aiming for a finish this year because this uh, December in the Netherlands stands for Sinterklaas which is a Dutch um, holiday tradition and um, it's close to Santa uh, but Sinterklaas is riding on a horse on the rooftops uh, instead of driving a sleigh <laughs> so um, Sinterklaas is uh, celebrated on the 5th of December each year and I would like to have this finished on or by the 5th so um, that is my goal on my whip go board um, yeah what can I tell you? In my last video I explained I uh, had not the best day ever when I started this piece. I got a laptop on my head. Um, it fell down. I miscounted, started in the wrong place. Name it, I did it. So um, I picked it up again after I finished playing with Jax and started working on it and miscounted again why i i don't know what's happening but <laughs> i miscounted again i'm one stitch off but i'm leaving it i'm not going to take everything out again i'm leaving it so let's see if i can do this This is what I have so far. I really like it. I used the call for uh, DMCs. The fabric is a 28 count haunted by Picture This Plus. Um, really like it. Like working on this. But I do believe this shrinked a lot during the dyeing process. So um, yeah, I have a bit of trouble using two threads over two. But I love how this looks. And yeah, I'm where yeah i'm one stitch off here in the roof so i will have to um, when i finished this part of the house i will have to go to the border um, and see if i can fudge it somewhere because i'm not taking it out anymore i'm yeah i have made so many mistakes on this one already i'm not going to do it again so I'm just going to see if I can fudge it so but I like it anyway uh, yeah this is what I have and I'm not going to cross off number 12 on my whip go board because it's not finished but someday it will this year so 
Uh, in the meantime, on Saturdays uh, in the evening, I work on my Mirabilia Touching the Autumn Sky. I have the pattern on loan by Nolene, expat stitcher on Instagram. And I want to finish this, hopefully this year. This is on my Whipco board as well. I um, want to send the pattern back uh, because I have it on loan. So this is my Saturday project. And uh, by now you have seen where I was the last time. And I really enjoy working on this. Um, yeah, I don't know why I can tell you, but this is what I have so far. Uh, let's see if I can show you what I did. I finished this white part or no, <laughs> I finished this part white part on the dress and I focused on uh, finishing up this part and the back stitching on this tail and uh, itchy nose um, yeah I really like to focus on a piece of the uh, pattern next time I will be hopefully um, filling up the, the dress I that's my focus for the next Saturday I will I will be working on this one and yeah i really love this i work on 28 count jobelin hand dyed by me with bahama blue and really love how this turned out and i hope it's yeah you can see the modeling and the color because it's washing out a bit but that's okay I'm going to be sad when this is finished because it's a wonderful stitch. Unfortunately, is it is um, out of print, so I was very happy to uh, lend or loan words again. Nolene uh, loaned me this pattern because it was nowhere to be found. Um, the last. Um, whip I worked on uh, is my Sunday uh, stitch which was a stitch along with Alice uh, she already finished it you sh you saw it in my last video it's a perfect world by the Scarlet House uh, Stacy 911 stitcher already started this one um, and yeah love her progress love to see it I am working on the border it's also in, on my whip go board uh, the border the entire border is my finish goal for this year I want to finish this border which is a beast it's a beast but love how it turns out so yeah let's show you what I have so far and I need to pull some threads out of the way this is what I have so far and I did a lot on the border last Sunday I as I just told you in my last video I don't have enough I think for the entire border of Raven by X Judy sign which is a charcoal -y black thread and I uh, am just using one strand of that Raven black Raven and one strand of 310 DMC just to make sure I have enough and uh, yeah yeah really like how this is looking I'm stitching this one on 28 count um, white mustard by X2 design and I love working on this fabric it's very soft and yeah love it and I hope to finish it this year but my first goal is to finish that beast of a border <laughs> Those were my whips for um, yeah, this video. Um, I was focus focusing a lot on the two pieces uh, on my whip go board. I'm going to change things up a bit for the next month, but because I don't want to have only two whips I wor I'm working on, uh, so I'm going to choose uh, some days during the week to work on my focus pieces and the other days I, I'm just picking other projects. 
then before I show you my um, dyeing process I would like to show you some haul I got um, on a Dutch um, yeah how do you call this past the stash group on Facebook um, I'm losing the the American name for it um, but you know what I mean was a someone who sold some silks and for very little so I immediately said I want them <laughs> um, I bought this is the thread gather silk and colors this is silver queen which is a gorgeous silvery white gray thread with lots of variegation really like this and I bought she only had two uh, she had four but the other two were already gone so this one is a Gloriana which is sable which is a gorgeous greenish brownish um, thread and yeah really liked it and for the amount she asked I couldn't pass this up so yeah love it then I came across um, a website um, I had seen some um, bead embroidery which I was interested in and um, wasn't planning on starting something but uh, starting something new but I was just intrigued uh, it's the same as cross stitching but only with beads so I uh, chose a kit from them it's a Dutch um, web shop um, which I found it's uh, hobbydoityourself.com or .nl I, .nl I'm listing it below and um, the, the one I chose was this from Abri art, I think you call it, which is Tanzania, Tanzanian, Tanzanian flowers. I thought it was very colorful and springy, and yeah. Um, what I like about this, it's um, this is this came from Russia, but uh, they also include a very nice Dutch uh, description on how to you use this and do this. So I'm going, just going to open it show you this is just a uh, manual on how to do this um, which is in English and in Russian but they included a Dutch um, description on how to do it and it's full of these beads um, really nice nice colors and I am just going to try it out if I like it so we'll see and this is the canvas that came with it so I'm not sure how to do this I don't know if I can pierce this fabric or canvas but we'll see I'm going to do this I'm going to try it out and uh, there's something else on the way I would like to try out for some time now I've seen a lot of Luca S uh, kits and I believe they are very detailed and very beautiful and I chose one from them and uh, it's on its way so we'll see when it gets here I'm going to show you um, but then this web shop noticed or found out I had a floss tube channel so they contacted me and asked me if I would like to give you a uh, code um, a coupon code for when you first going to shop at this web shop uh, so you get 20% of your first purchase of this shop that's that's wonderful so I said of course I'm going to link that below the code is in my description box uh, if you um, order your first purchase which is not the on sale items those are excluded uh, they have monthly on sale items and those are not uh, for the 20% of your first purchase purchase but uh, everything else uh, you can 
uh, get the 20% off. So that's wonderful. So I will link the web shop, web shop below and the promo code or the, the coupon code. So um, look at the kits and things yourself. They have um, a variety of things uh, like dimensions kits, uh, Lanarta kits. So a lot on that website. So and the shipping was really, really fast. So just go to the web shop and get your 20% off. Um, then I was contacted uh, by Forest City Stitching, which is a fairly new floss tuber I subscribe to. Uh, she did a giveaway on her channel and I won. <laughs> what? <laughs> um, yeah, I won. It was a wonderful kit. Um, I'm not going to stitch it anytime soon, but I love how it looks and I'm going to stitch it someday. She sent this gorgeous, cute card with a very nice note in it. And the kit I won is Roses by Creative Accents. And yeah, if you know anything about me, I like roses. I have I even have a tattoo here. Of roses so yeah really like this one so thank you very much um, Lisa I believe is your first name um, thank you very much for giving this away I'm going to stitch it someday and uh, yeah I really like this so thanks then um, I have another project I am working on but I can't tell you about um, it's a model stitch for for a shop and I can't show you and can't tell you yet because it's yeah I can't tell you so <laughs> I'm sorry I hope to tell you more about it the next time I'm filming my video so um, you will have to wait for that then um, the last part of my video is how I dye my fabrics um, as you all know I uh, watched the video of Carrie House of Floss and Fluff, how to dye your fabrics in mason jars, and I immediately was sold. I started and tried my own and really liked how the fabrics looked. And um, yeah, that's the only way I am dyeing my fabrics right now. Um, I received a lot of requests from people who wanted to uh, see how I dye in jars. It's not a tutorial because there is one already. It's just how I dye my fabrics using that method. And yeah, add in some touches of Debbie. So um, yeah, I hope you enjoy. Uh, you will see how I dye my fabrics here. Hi, it's Debbie from Creatively Yours and welcome to my how to dye video. Um, I. Uh, I'm not sure if my lighting is good enough. I uh, did put on all the lights I have in the kitchen. Um, I'm going to show you what you need to dye. Uh, first off, I would like to tell you that there is already a tutorial by... Um, what's her name? Um, Carrie, the House of Floss and Fluff for jar dyeing. So this is by no means uh, another tutorial. This is just my way of using the jar method and maybe put some little Dutch tints into it. So um, let's start. First off, you need your fabric. This time, uh, the first time I'm going to use 20 count even weave, um, which is not showing up. This is just white. And you're gonna need your fabric. You're gonna need a spoon. You're gonna need your fabric. Um, I use and I don't know if this is showing up but um, this is Dilon. this is just a Dutch brand which is readily available in the Netherlands and this is just a powder dye and that's what I'm going to use not these colors but I'm going to use another color um, you need a paper towel which I have already ready <laughs> You need a tray for when you um, dyed the first time and you want to add another color. You're going to need your jar. I use a small one for my small projects and I don't have a bigger one 
for my bigger projects. So what I'm using is just a jar from vegetables, which were not canned, but jarred, <laughs> if that is a word. This is a bigger uh, jar and I'm using this for my bigger pieces. So I'm going to use it for my fabric, which I just showed you. Um, the first thing I do is wet my fabric. Um, just a little tip, I prepped my fabric, uh, I um, searched, not really searched because I don't own a serger, I prepped my fabric by, if I can show you, just put some floss around the edges to prevent it from fraying because it will fray a lot during the dyeing process. So. I'm going to rinse this in cold water. It doesn't have to be extremely wet, but it does have to be not dry. So I'm going to open my jar or can. And what I do with my fabric I'm going to put it in with the point, one corner, and I hope this just does show up, and just going to tug it in from the corner down, just make sure it's down. And I need to grab something I forgot. I don't hope everything is falling down on me, but we'll see. The last thing you're going to need is just a measuring cup. This is just an old one, which I'm using for dyeing. And what I use, I don't use hot water. I use um, hand warm water from the faucet. So I'm going to get some warm water and I hope this isn't too noisy for you. Maybe I'll be, I'll be right back. I'm back. I just got some hand warm water. Um, I don't know exactly how much. I just, yeah, I don't measure. So I'm going to get my dye. This time around, this is a um, very big piece of uh, even weave, 20 count. And I want to use um, gray because I want to use it for the linen and threads stitch along. For this year so I'm going to use gray powdered dye this is another brand in the dye long this is uh, just what I had in my house so uh, I'm going to use this you're just going to use little bits at a time because it's a very strong dye so you're just going to and I hope it's it's not in frame so hold on I'm going to move this out of the way you're just going to put it in the cup and just stir good. You're going to need to add a little bit of table salt. I'm just going to use that. I believe the new uh, dyes uh, have already salt in them, but I'm not sure about this one. So I'm just going to put in a little bit of salt to set the color. And you're just going to stir, 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 stir. Because you don't want to have the residue um, on your fabric. Uh, sometimes there will be a little bit of splodges. And that's not a very big of a deal, but I don't like it. Now I'm going to look at the color of the dye, if this is the color I want. Yeah, I think so. Um, when it dries, your fabric, uh, it dries a little bit lighter. Uh, I'm going to add a little bit more because I want to have a little bit darker of a dye. So, just a little bit. I think it's about three quarters of a tablespoon, um, which I added into the warm water. And, yeah, stir, stir, stir. That's the only thing I can tell you. Let's see. Yeah, that's better. You can see it 
right here. I just put it on my paper towel to see if the color is right. When you think the color is right, you set aside the spoon. You're going to need your jar with the fabric inside it and you just pour it over. Just merge it and there will be bubbles popping up. You need to put on the lid and what I do is just, and I have already paint or dye on my fingers, but that's okay. What you need to do to take out the bubbles is you just carefully flip it and flip it back. Then you're going to need to open it and you're going to need your spoon to really submerge your fabric again. And then you put on the lid again and I'm going to grab a I don't know what it's called, but I'm going to grab it. <laughs> and the only thing you do is just set it aside. Then I have two, uh, or not two, I have a couple of very small pieces, which I'm going to use the small uh, jar for. And I'm going to see if I can mix up another die. So I'll be right back. So I'm back. I got some new uh, warm water. I got my dye. This one is Dylon also, but it's in this container. Uh, you have the, the sachets or the, the packages and you have these containers and both are just the powdered dye. So I'm going to use Emerald for 28 count, just two small pieces of fabric, one gray and one white. Uh, I want to use them for ornaments. I, I didn't prep these. Um, fabrics so I'm going to rinse them with cold water and put in some dye. Okay. First off we'll set the water aside. We're going to put the fabric inside the jar with the corner down you just put that in with the corner first and doesn't matter which one is on top so that's inside the jar then we're gonna get our water and we're going to put in the emerald dye. I'm just going to pour it in if I can. I think I need to do something. I'm just going to use a little uh, teaspoon. Um, You're just going to pour it in and you can see it turns blue already you're just going to rinse or not rinse um, stir 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 put in some salt and just stir until you think this is ready to go the other jar I just Put the bigger fabric in. Uh, I'm just going to leave it in for about an hour. These small ones I think it's going to be 30 minutes and we'll see how it looks after that. I'm going to see if the dye is of my liking. Yeah I think so. I'm going to set aside the dye. I'm going to take my jar and just pour the dye in until you are above the fabric. Close the lid, turn it over and 
and there's enough in there. I'm just going to put it under again. I like the lighter spots, so I'm going to leave it like this, close it again and set it aside. And then, yeah, the only thing you need to do is just wait. Uh, the smaller one, 30 minutes, the bigger one, an hour, and we'll see you when I get back. Bye. Okay, I'm back. I have had the smaller jar inside with the fabric uh, for about half an hour. So I'm going to pour it out and rinse it with cold water. And I just want to mention, uh, I forgot the first time I filmed a little clip. Um, the reason why I use hand warm water instead of boiled water is because it shrinks your fabric. Uh, if you use boiled water, if that's what you want, if that's what you want it to be, uh, fine. But and that's that's okay but i don't like the shrinkage so i use hand warm water and it because of the salt i added uh it holds the, the the color so um i don't see the need to use boiled water so that's what i wanted to tell you i'm going to rinse this and with cold water and i'll be right back rinse it i rinse it until you see no color coming off anymore so that's just a little tip I'm going to show you, this was the white fabric, and I hope it's showing up, but this is exactly, oh, it's still a bit too wet. It, this is exactly the color I wanted. Um, it's modeled, but I think it's not showing up. Uh, but that's okay, you will see it in my normal video uh, when it's dry and ironed. But this is just exactly how I wanted it, so this is going to be as is. And this one is the gray fabric, which I use with the same emerald. And I think it can use a little bit of green for what I want to do with it. And maybe a little bit of uh, turquoise. So we're going to try it. This is the first time I'm trying this. I'm just going to prop it up inside this very big container for this little small piece of fabric. Uh, but that's that doesn't matter. I'm going to set it aside and I'm going to get some hot water. So I have warm water and I'm going to add in a little bit of olive green. Let's see if I can open it again because I closed it with something I can't open. <laughs> And it has been in my stash for a longer time, but it doesn't matter. So I'm going to add a little bit to the water. And I'm going to add a little bit of salt. Oh, I'm sorry, I bumped my phone. <laughs> You should see the setup I have. It's yeah. Oh, this is going to be a wonderful green. Just stir it until you feel that it's stirred enough. And then I'm going to put a little bit on my yeah, I think that's it's just a light green. I just wanted to add it. You're gonna get your container with your fabric and you just I'm not going to hold. I'm not going to uh, pour it. I'm just going to get my tablespoon and just get some splotches random on it. Just a light touch of green. Just where you want it. I think that's enough. I'm going to get another batch of warm water and I'm going to add uh, turquoise. Hold on. Another batch of warm water and I'm going to 
add a little bit of turquoise to the mix. Which is a very light blue. Add in some salt again. And stir it up. Until you think it's enough of stirring because you're not going to pour it you're just going to take some of the dye out I think it's uh, the right color I'm going to add it here and there I think that's enough you're just going to leave it for maybe 15 minutes and I don't think it's going to make a difference but we'll see this was just a try maybe I should have had dry fabric I don't know but it's just a try I'm going to um, take the gray bigger piece out of the can so uh, I'll be right back so I took the gray bigger piece out of the can and it turned out beautifully but it's in my opinion a little bit too dark but that's okay uh, I'm going to use the sulky threads the green uh, ones uh, all sorts of green and I think it's going to be lovely and it's um, drying a lighter uh, than it actually now than it actually is now so there is a lot of modeling I love it and we'll see it when it's dry and yeah um, I love it. I'm going to get my little piece of fabric which I just poured over with other colors. I'm going to rinse it off with cold water. This is what I have. It's, I love it. I see some green parts, some blue parts. Not, it's not really showing up, but it's very subtle and I love the modeling. So I'm going to leave it at this. I hope you enjoyed my uh, how to dye, um, not tutorial, but showing. I hope you uh, want to experiment yourself with fabric dyes and uh, make those beautiful fabrics yourself so you can enjoy your stitches um, even more with your beautiful fabrics. So I'm going to show how my fabrics turned out in my regular video uh, when they are dry and ironed. So I'll see you in my normal video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you uh, for you in two minutes. <laughs> Bye. Let's see how the fabrics turned out. The first one is the, the biggest one, the, the gray one. Um, I just showed you uh, that it turned out a tad bit dark. <laughs> it did. It, it dries up lighter than it does when it's wet, but it's still a bit dark, but I like it anyway. I am going to show you. This is what I have. I like it. There's a lot of modeling and uh, yeah, like it very much. I'm going to fold this so I can show you the, the flosses I am going to use it for this fabric. What I'm going to use it for is for the um, Linen and Threads uh, Quaker Stitch Along, uh, Mystery Stitch Along for this year. And I'm using, I'm going to use these sulky cotton petites and I think it's going to be gorgeous on this fabric it's I think it's going to pop I was aiming for a bit lighter but it turned out a bit too dark but that's okay I think the colors of the flosses are going to pop anyway so yeah not sure when I'm going to start but I'm going to start soon so that's my first fabric 
the next one uh, was a small one for Stitch Mania, which I wanted to uh, kit up. I don't have the threads ready, but I dyed the fabric. It was the white piece of fabric, a small piece. And I have some fluff on my fabric. It's for, it's for this one. It's for this one. It's for Barbara Emmett Designs, and this is called Christmas Hair. It's going to be a mania start for this year. It's going to be hashtag bad mania. I'm going to do five Barbara Emmett Designs. And I dyed my fabric with emerald, and it turned out gorgeous. I think it's exactly the right color. So. That's that one. And the last one, and I have to dye some more, but they, those are going to be beige. But by now you have already seen how I do it, so I'm not going to show that. Is for Autumn Keeper by Barbara and the Designs, which is also going to be one of the mania starts for this year. It's this pattern, which is a gorgeous girl with a gorgeous dress. And I did it on the gray fabric with emerald and green and it turned out this way it looks a lot like it but a bit bluer i guess um, it doesn't show the green much a little bit very light here and there so i have to improve my skills on dyeing over dyed fabric but i think it turned out gorgeous and i think it's going to be lovely with this pattern let's see it's going to be wonderful I think so those those were my dyed fabrics um, I just showed you how I dyed them and uh, I hope you enjoyed um, yeah me showing how I do it I hope you learned something from it um, I hope you yeah take some th something from it and uh, yeah if I can do it <laughs> anybody can do it so um, yeah that's it um, I'm going to thank you for watching this video I'm going to thank my subscribers for subscribing and commenting and liking and if you are new to my channel I hope you would like to uh, subscribe and like the video and leave comments and if you have questions, my email address is in the bottom of the description box, so you can message me if you would like. Um, and if you want to leave a question in the comments, it's fine by me. Um, yeah, that's it for now. I'm going to be back in two weeks uh, in a new month. And yeah, thank you for watching and I'll see you in two weeks. Bye for now.